Hi, welcome to the channel, Raymond Tech Food Life. In this video, we're going to be reviewing a Udemy course, how to become a Shopify expert from zero to hero by Tim Sharp. I got recommended this course by a friend I met at a local coding meetup. You can generally find this course on sale for about $20 on Udemy. I'll include a link to it below if you're interested. I am not affiliated or sponsored by the course in any way. So I'll do a quick review and just go over the gist of it before we go into the main review. It's a short course, it's only about five to six hours long, and the contents of it is very begin beginner friendly. And you probably won't be confused by any of the material that he covers. Or anything that is complicated, he explains fairly well. I think this course is great as an introduction to all the different sections of Shopify, but it does not make you a Shopify expert as advertised. For anyone who is interested in running a Shopify store, this is a great resource to get you started and make sure that the wall of mystery behind Shopify is taken down. Now let's start the main review. The structure of this course is fairly simple and straightforward. Tim breaks down his course into five main sections. First, the introduction. It's just a short overview of what the course covers and how to get your Shopify account and store running. Design. In this course, design mainly refers to theme manipulation and how to change your selected items, what to show, how to add new things, with the primary focus on the Thon, Thon theme. E-commerce, the actual functionality of the store, the behind the scenes and the customer interaction side, as well as marketing, sales, and inventory. Apps, these are just general apps that improve sales, marketing, functionality, as well as other add-ons that increase the capabilities of your store. And finally, the outro. In this section, he just reviews what he has taught and what you can do from this point on, as well as some other of his courses that he recommends taking. The first section, Introduction and Shopify Store Setup. This is a really short section where he just kind of introduces what the course covers and how you can become a freelancer after taking this course. And he also helps you set up your Shopify account and show you how your Shopify store looks just brand new. Next, design, which is mainly just the manipulation in this course. In this section though, Tim also introduces resources that supplement the design of your store. For example, he shows you how to convert your default Shopify store URL to a custom URL with the hosting company that he recommends. He also shows how to change from the email you use to sign up for Shopify with a custom business email that promotes the validity of your store. And then he shows you how to create a quick logo that, to get you up and running and how to find commercial photos that you can use without worries of being copyrighted. He covers the five main sections of your online store, theme, blog posts, pages, navigation, and preferences. The first section of design, themes. He shows the amount of themes available in both paid and free mode. This course mainly focuses on the Don theme and how general theme manipulation works. He breaks down inside how you can edit the Don theme, such as adding and removing items according to you or your client's needs. He shows the amount of control you can have on the visual and experience from just this basic theme. I think though, for anybody serious about becoming a Shopify expert, you should have a working knowledge of Liquid and how to build custom themes. So the next section of design would be the blog post. He kind of just explains how like blog posts is fairly rarely used. Like you don't really use it in a, in a product store, but say if you wanted to have like a dedicated product description page, then that's when you would use something like it like a blog post. So after blog posts, we have pages. This kind of helps with like, you can like organize all your things into different pages. In in the course, you create a contact me, a design, e-commerce and apps. It's kind of just like the different levels or like the sub levels of your store and kind of how to keep them all organized. Next we have navigation. Navigation kind of deals with your users um, their user experience while they're on your store. So it's things like your main and your footer, as well as search optimization, which he mentions later on with like the usage of like tags and creating like further tabs that help people find specific things. And last but not least, we have the preference. It's kind of a glossed over, like he kind of just like tells you what to put in, for example, in this section, because it doesn't really affect the design as much, but it does affect like the search engine optimization like your title page, like your title and your meta tags and all that, very important, and what images you show. 
And then later on, maybe if you want to like look more into preferences, because there is Google Analytics and Facebook Pixels, then you'd want to like spend more time on those topics. So that's the main contents of his design section. I think that they're really good as like introduction to Shopify users because you're like looking into like your sales channel and your online store and you're like, there's so many things for me to look at. And he kind of like goes through it step by step, introducing it and telling you like what this does and how you can like further expand onto it if, if the need comes. The next major section of this course is e-commerce, which is about the actual functionality of the store. I think this is a section which makes the course worth its value. He explains a lot of concepts that I was unfamiliar with, but in a way that made it very easy to understand. He splits this this section into, into two subsections, the store itself and the checkout process. In the store section, he explains how to add different selling locations, markets, all based on geography, how to add a simple product, that's like a product that has no customization. There's only one of the kind. And then how to add variable product, which is basically anything else that has like anything you can change, like size, color, etc., are all considered variable product. And how to sell gift cards, how to create collections, as well as featured collections, the usage of tags, which was mentioned earlier in the nav navigation section, and how that improves the overall user experience in your store, how importing, transfer, and inventory works, as well as setting up different warehouse locations. He also shows you how to add different template policies like terms of service, refunds, and privacy policy. I'd like to add that like these templates from Shopify are great, but make sure that when you are adding them, you read through each one and fill in the parts with your required information or else it looks like you just copy and pasted it in. I think that Tim does a great job of explaining the main contents of Shopify. And that to become an expert, you have to play around with each of these settings. And through just experience and tests, you will learn what works best for you and your store, or maybe your client's store. And then the second section of e-commerce is the checkout section. He, in this section, he explains how to add different payment providers, including different payment providers based on locations, where you could have like Shopify payment in one location and then PayPal in another location, how to add shipping and delivery fees. And he briefly goes into taxes and duties, how to set up different appearances based on different markets or location, how to customize your cards and checkouts, how to customize the user experience during checkout, and then how to how to email clients when they have like abandoned checkouts and stuff. And then a brief intro into analytics and marketing and how to give customer discounts. I think this section is great. It, it really has a lot of dense topics that he briefly goes over. This section really opens up your brain to the world of e-commerce. Like in each of the subsections, like taxes, analytics, and marketing, Tim recommends that you find an expert in each of those fields because trying to handle all of them at once is very challenging and it's very, I want to say, intensive and unwise. You, you should probably learn just about enough to understand how to communicate with the specialist, but let them handle it more. And that concludes the e-commerce section of this course. The next like major section of this course is like apps, which help with both the design functionality and additional capabilities of your store. In the apps section, Tim introduces apps, which are meant to increase the bottom line of your store. These are meant to increase revenue and make customers be more willing to purchase on your store. His rule for apps is that if they're paid, they should increase your revenue by 10 X the amount of the app like how much ever month you're paying, it should prove 10X. So if you're paying $19 a month, it should increase your sales by 190. Tim explains how you generally add apps and how to give them control and necessary information and just the support that you get from these apps. He breaks them down into three main types, marketing, sales, and operations. The marketing apps that he introduces are pretty self-explanatory. He explains apps for seeing what people are searching called SearchPy, um, cross-platform marketing like onto Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as well as email marketing, which is an old strategy, but it still has its relevance to the same. The next type of apps are sales apps. There's actually a variety of apps that all fall under the sales app. For example, things like Luke's, which imports product reviews. I think he does a great job of saying that you shouldn't import fake reviews and have like real reviews. 
it, it's very obvious when a review is fake and that like it just destroys any credibility that you've built and then abandoned cart because it's much easier to do an abandoned checkout but when you're doing an abandoned cart there's no information that you have so what this sales app does for the abandoned cart is it'll set up a notification and pop up on the browser and remind your clients that they forgot something and there's upsell and cross sell which is kind of how after your client has already added to cart you show them the item that they might might want to buy and even where right after they purchase item you show them another item they might might want to buy and i think one of the one of the most interesting apps that i saw him recommend was lucky orange this is an interesting app it, it records the heat map of how your client interacts with your store so it records their session and shows that to you and then you can you from that you can see what is causing them to not add, not leave, or where they're going to. And you can use that to increase the likelihood of them adding to cart and checking out. The last group of apps that Tim introduces are operation apps. These are mainly supplements to increase the functionality of your store. He introduces a help center app that creates an FAQ and an online help desk. This is a paid app, but I think the value of it is worth and then there's also an order tracking app that updates your customers on the shipping status and when the delivery will be and et cetera. And then there's the QuickBook apps, which helps you keep your tax in control. And although you will want a tax expert for your store, this makes it easier for the expert to see all the data that is coming in. Shopify development is, I think for those looking into becoming like a Shopify developer, there's another sector other than theme development, which is like Shopify app development, which is very interesting. And the current standard is using React and Node to create apps. This concludes the app section. I think there are so many apps just in the Shopify marketplace that it's hard to cover all of them. So Tim kind of just introduces a few that he knows and he uses. And they're, they're good as like an introduction, but with everything else in this course, you kind of have to dabble with it yourself to find what works best for you. So that, that concludes that, the app section. And then you move on to like the closing slash ending section. He, in this section, he kind of just explains what to do after this course or like what you can do, sharing some resources like Upwork and Fiverr, as well as some other course recommendation for what you're interested on. For example, his other courses, like he has one on drop shipping. And I think that you can see the value of this. Now let's go over some nuggets, some golden nuggets from this course that I think I will, that will stay in my memory for a very long time. The most important factors to a successful e-commerce store is its ability to get abandoned checkouts, abandoned carts back in, like converting those abandoned checkouts and abandoned carts into sales and having product reviews that build trust. One of the apps that I think that are that is very important, no matter what type of store you have, is something like Lucky Orange. It's like a heat map, seeing how clients or potential clients interact with your store has immense value and can allow you to cater your store to what your client wants to see. Final message. This course is great as an introduction and opening you up to the world of Shopify and e-commerce. I think this course is worth its value and makes creating and maintaining a Shopify store seem manageable and not as challenging as it did in the beginning. It also shows that Shopify is not a get rich quick scheme that others make it seem like it is. Subscribe to join the journey and like to share some love. Thank you.